Good day, everybody. I just wanted to go over a couple things to clarify, especially for those of you who are online, of sort of where we're heading in the next couple weeks and uh, give you a good idea of what's going on. So the first thing I want to do is I want, I'm going to go actually back to a home page. And I just want you to know, and we're going to go to the student view. All right. So this will be what you're seeing when you have your computer. So when you're looking at your student view, okay, you'll notice uh, you have your announcements there, and hopefully you're checking in on them. Um, if you go down, you have information here about myself, uh, depending on the class, Ms. Carruthers also. The weekly schedule is down here. Now, the weekly schedule can change. It can be in flux because sometimes in class you, you get further than you want to or not as far. Um, I am going to try and move that up so you can have a better view of where that is, too. That will be my next thing to work on. Um, but you can always go and look at that weekly schedule. It gives you an idea of what's going on. Uh, the main thing, what you really need to do is make sure you go to those modules. Everything we do, we put, I put in the module. All right, so as you can tell, we are starting our Steinbeck unit of mice and men. And you'll see in this module, last week we started it, we had a worksheet at Voice of America. There's the documentary. You click on that, the documentary comes on. If you, there's a worksheet. Turn the, you can do the, do the worksheet, then turn that in. Anything you see with points, do, because that's those are points, okay? Uh, this worksheet, the in-class students, actually this was one where they a lot chose to fill one out, an actual worksheet out. Uh, but you can, again, if you're not in class, you can do it online, fill it, hand it in, and then be uh, happy to grade it. And that was due last night, so I'll get grading that this week. Um, so you have your documentary. Sometimes I'll put notes on there, like those who did not take the subject, predicate, sentence, fragment, quiz, go to agilastic.com, uh, log in through Google and take the quiz. Um, we are doing phrases and clauses. We've been working on phrases and clauses throughout. We started off with subjects and predicates, um, we morphed that into sentences and fragments. Now we have talked about phrases and clauses on the weekly summary, uh, on the, the weekly schedule. I put which slides we're on but make sure you're sort of going over that as we are. Um, that would be good. So we did harvest gypsies, the entr entrance and exit slips. Um, there's the actual um, slideshow right there and our same matter mean chart. So you'll notice there's five points there, there's 10 points. Do them and then hand them in. <laughs> the notes on the intro are two of mice and men. So that's where we started today. We did that intro. Uh, then we went and we opened up Mice and Men. We're doing it through Cami. All right, there's a PDF. Do not submit this. We're going to continue accruing that. And I, I put it on the thing, but if you didn't see it, um, you, we're going to wait to uh, turn that in until we're finished reading it the whole time. Okay, so uh, when we're done reading it, I'll look at it, look for annotations, and then you'll get your points for that. Um, the diction and style, that's one of the things that just – it's one of those fluctuating things we didn't get to. We talked about it. And so we're going to go over and I'm probably not, I'm going to take that out as an assignment. So you won't have to do that. I don't even think I activated it. Uh, so um, uh, we'll take that out as an assignment. And then an audio book for every chapter, you'll have an audio book. So keep that in mind, too, um, as we go through things. So, again, we've been talking about phrases and clauses. I'm going to do a separate um, video of that, discussing that coming up. Today we went over notes, the notes on Steinbeck as we went over them were ones that we've already talked about, especially in looking at his biography um, and what, uh, when we watched his biography, got a lot of these notes. So again, he enters Stanford University, never finishes. He is a Pulitzer Prize winner. He's written 28 novels, received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 62. Um, considered one of our great American iconic authors, okay? That's a simple biography. If you want to watch it, that'd be great. Um, but if you did, if you watch the one we did, the documentary, you have more enough information on that there. Um, when he's writing the novel, it's in 1937, and Of Mice and Men reflects life during the Great Depression. Uh, it was originally written as a play, and you'll see that as you read it. He sets every scene up, every chapter. There's a, at least a paragraph sort of setting the scene. And then there's dialogue. There's a lot of dialogue throughout, okay, throughout his writing. So you can see how it was written as a play. 
Uh, it's based in Salinas, which is about halfway from north and south in right there in uh, California, okay, right on the Pacific, okay, a little bit below San Francisco. It's an agricultural town. Uh, is what he is basing uh, basing it on. It's actually in the book he's looking at, Soul Dad. Um, and he patterns his character after the men and the women who are impacted by the Great Depression. Uh, you know, we talked about the Great Depression from Harvard's Gypsies. You see the impact of it when you watch the documentary, one of the worst periods to, uh, of living through, trying to just struggling to, to get a job and to support your family all started with the stock market crash and it went from there. So the whole 30s, you're looking at a Great Depression, you know, 30% uh, unemployment in 1932. So a third of the people in the United States were unemployed, couldn't support themselves or their family. Uh, FDR was president. People were just basically a lot of hopelessness. Uh, there seemed to be around. Um, sometimes it's reflected in some of the music. Uh, you do get some music that, that tries to have a positive spin on it. And uh, in the end, World War II seemed to be what really got us out of that because that kicked our manufacturing back in the gear. Um, during the Great Depression, we have, again, people forced to move across the country just to try to find work. And of mice and men, we follow George and Lenny, two men who represent that multitude of these workers, these migrant workers, people going from place to place. That's what we mean by migrant, place to place, you migrate. Okay, and they traveled all the way through. And this one looks especially at California. This is where Steinbeck's from, right? What you know, in the area you know. So he's writing about California and what was going on there. Uh, this idea of the American dream, this idea that we should all be able to get a plot of land, provide for our family, live there, live a, a good life, providing for ourselves. And uh, unfortunately, George and Lenny are forced to live a lifestyle with travel prohibits them from settling down, from starting a family. Uh, the idea of rootlessness, no roots to really have, to grab onto where you have a foundation and people you know, uh, loneliness, you know, you're just traveling from place to place, no real friends. Um, this idea of settling down is that what we see right from the beginning in the novel, uh, they talk about getting a place, having a farm, having these rabbits, living off the fat of the land. Okay, it becomes important to them. Um, migrant workers, again, they're moving from place to place, and that's sort of what they're doing, you know, in this the whole thing in the background, what's happening in the United States. People know about the Depression, the Dust Bowl uh, has caused a lot of people to move to try to find work. So all these different things, are variables are adding up. Um, California experiences a farming boon, so that was one place where they, you know, they still needed workers. Unfortunately, so many other workers went there. And over 150,000 people migrate to go west. And all of a sudden, they now they have way too many. So how do you deal with that? Fierce competition. And, uh, there is a lot of, um, you know, migrant workers had, didn't have much support. And you had these big businesses. And so it was a, a difficult time. After each chapter, we're going to talk about a couple different literary elements. Um, I'm going to go through uh, real quick. I'm just going to hit a couple coming up um, from this. Okay, so we'll read portions of the class. This is a class. I have uh, put a chapter one audiobook there for the chapter one for those of you who'd like to hear it. Okay, so there is a link every after every chapter that we do in a class. We're going to have that. Um, also, there is the cami that you need to do. Make sure you're getting that done. All right. Um, and we look at Of Mice and Men, and we're just going to start from the beginning here. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to read it all. I just want to make sure, you know, you always look. This is a famous cover drawing, two men sitting. Look at this nice serene uh, picture here of nature. You also have in the background here, like, this rabbit. So that's interesting how that is. Um, and that's taking place. The title of Mice and Men, uh, well, later on, we're going to really focus on where that came from. But think to yourself, of Mice and Men, what is the relationship? Remember Steinbeck in, his, in that biography, he thought everything had some type of relationship in nature. What is our relationship? So Mice and Men seem vastly different, but could there be a relationship? Someone suggested, I thought today, you know, rather astutely, the idea 
you have the mice who are just trying to survive, scrounging, doing whatever they can to survive. And then people during the 30s, a lot of people were doing the same way, whatever they could do to, in order to survive. Um, so I thought that was a very uh, a good observation. Chapter one, like all of his chapters, again, you'll see it starts off. It's very, the nature, it's very peaceful, very serene. It's really a beautiful landscape. He does a wonderful job painting with landscapes uh, and with words. And uh, so you have that. It starts off, everything is seems to be going as it should in nature, okay? And then all of a sudden, nature is disturbed by what? By humanity. Men come everything disperses, they get out of there because here comes man. It could be Steinbeck sort of in a big, deeper thematic idea here coming up and talking to us about where our place is or what we are really doing with nature, okay? And so it starts off, we have George and Lenny, two polar opposites. As you read, sort of make notes of those different uh, characteristics of each one of them. Uh, George, again, at times gets upset with Lenny. He gets mad. It's, uh, you know, because Lenny um, is cognitively delayed. He's, he's, he's unable to grasp certain ideas, okay? And it's not his fault. It just is the way, unfortunately, nature has, uh, you know, created what he, he is, okay? Um, so we get their relationship. George will get mad at him, and then he'll realize he gets too mad. He's like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm see, sometimes he looks ashamedly and he, he feels bad, or he'll even say, I, I've been mean, you know, and, and he, he regrets that. But uh, he does get frustrated with Lenny, and Lenny keeps him on his toes. A lot of instances of foreshadowing, I hope you see here, about things that happened when they were working at the ranch in the town of Weed and what happened at that time. On page 13, I believe that was 13, there's a, a, something I make sure you're looking at. As you get there, oh, from 12 to 13, right here, with starting with, well, we ain't got any, George exploded. Whatever, whatever we ain't got, that's what you want. And then this whole tirade, you can see he's releasing his frustration. And at the end there, he also is sort of hinting at something that might have happened that we know you during their time there. It's also interesting that the life he would live without Lenny isn't really much of a fulfilling life. It's just going to the bar, chasing women, and um, playing pool. That's, there's not much fulfillment there either. But then, as we read, we see this idea of living off the fat of the land and that this idea that they have each other. That that's what makes them different. That that's why they don't have to go running around and carousing and going out to the bars. Okay. So that is important to, to notice. So keep in mind as you're reading that some of those things. All right. And finally, the last thing I want to go over is this idea here of diction, um, which we'll do an assignment of on next week. OK, so diction is basically word choice. It's it's there to convey a meaning, a meaning to get an effect, to evoke emotions, uh, to get the author's views. And the word choice here, as you could tell, you know, the, when we look at it, is it informal or formal? Well, very informal, especially when they're talking to each other. We have some rather coarse language, but Steinbeck is doing this realistically. He's not doing it excessively to do it. OK, he's not doing it with a malicious intent. He's doing it because this is how people talk. This is how people talk, real people, you know, at this time. That's what he's trying to show is realism um, there. When they're talking, it's direct. It's time that can be a little bit wordy when he's describing something. But he does a great job with that. Uh, the dialogue, I think there's a lot of it. But that doesn't mean it's excessive. I think it all fits in. There's not extra dialogue that is unnecessary. And again, the language is coarse. We, we can see that. Um, there's a lot of figurative language. That's keep in mind as you're going through this, look at that figurative language, make notes of it, because that will be something we're going to come back to and you'll have to find. Okay, different examples, whether it's a metaphor, a simile, um, personification, allusion, okay, hyperbole. All right. Now, we do not have to, I'm not going to have you do this exercise because I think reading it over, really doing a good annotation is what I want you to focus on in this chapter. That first chapter, getting a good background on it is so important. Uh, so make sure you're doing that. 
if you have questions as this is going along, please feel free to ask. I will be more than happy to, uh, to help you out with that. Okay, so um, again, as we're working, keep up the hard work and I will talk to you later.